I'm in my driveway this afternoon to talk to you about crossing the synapse. So you might notice there are a couple of neurons here in the background that I'm going to use to teach you about this. Don't mind the cars going by. Before you watch, you should make sure to print out the handout that's down under the description of the video. Mine's all filled in. Yours will be blank. But that way you can take some notes as I go through this information. Okay, first as we look at the drawings that I made, you should see there is one neuron and then there is a second neuron. And I drew them to try to resemble what's on your handout. So you're going to label the different parts of these neurons. But this is the starting end of a neuron, so you should recognize the dendrites branching, the cell body, which is the orange thing in the center, and then we go down the axon, and we reach the branchy part, which is the axon terminals. This neuron is going to be known as our sending neuron, or our presynaptic neuron, because it comes before the synapse. Then we have our second neuron that it connects to. It could connect to an effector cell like a muscle, but I'm going to use a neuron as an example. And we can see that this first neuron, the sending cell, its axon terminals connect to the dendrites of the next neuron. So that's our receiving cell or our postsynaptic cell. It's going to receive the signal in its dendrites and then if that signal is enough to stimulate it to do so, it will send a signal down its axon, so that would be another action potential. Remember that the signal always goes from dendrites to axon terminals, so you should draw an arrow showing that on your first neuron. And then again on your second neuron, it also has to go from dendrites to axon terminals. The two neurons do not actually touch. The gap between them is known as the synapse or the synaptic cleft. So you should circle that gap on your diagram and label it as synapse or synaptic cleft. The top of your handout should now be filled in. If you missed anything, go back and watch the first part. And now we're on the bottom of the front. So you should see a picture that looks sort of like these two things that I've drawn. And this is just a close up of the synapse. So we've zoomed in now. So we're going to talk about how I've represented some of these different things, and you should be labeling as I explain it. The part on the left that I did in orange represents the presynaptic neuron, so this is the one that's going to send the signal, and it's the axon terminal because the neurotransmitters are stored in the axon terminal in the terminal buttons. The little petri dishes that you can see represent vesicles, and vesicles are sacs in which the neurotransmitters are stored. The different colors of puffballs represent different kinds of neurotransmitters because there's often more than one kind. The colored pencils that I have um, in pairs, those represent the calcium channels. These are gated channels that are closed most of the time. The little orange puffballs that I just added, they keep wanting to blow away, represent calcium. See, there they go. That is the wrong way. They can't go that way. So those are our little calcium ions, and they are hanging out in the synapse waiting for something to happen. Then you look at the blue part. That represents the dendrite of the receiving cell, or the postsynaptic cell. And on its surface, there are proteins called receptor proteins. And they're waiting for neurotransmitters to give them a signal. Now flip your notes organizer over to the back. Remember when we learned about action potentials, action potentials happen within a single neuron. They travel down the axon. They are electrical. It's a flipping of charges. But what we're talking about now is what happens between two neurons. And this one isn't about electricity. Now it's about chemistry. So chemicals are going to cause this to happen. Look down in the table that shows you four different diagrams, and I would encourage you to color those the same color that you have on the front. I think it really helps to have color-coded notes, so my sending cell is orange just like on the top, my receiving cell is blue, most of us are very visual, I even colored in my synaptic cleft in a certain color, 
And even though I represented a few different kinds of neurotransmitters in my model, different cells can also have different kinds of neurotransmitters. So not every cell has every kind of neurotransmitter. Now on the back, I've color coded the same way, orange, blue, green. Don't try to just copy this, wait till I explain it. Nothing is gonna happen until the action potential reaches the axon terminal. So now we're under step one. So it's in the axon terminal of the sending cell. And when that happens, calcium is going to flow into the axon terminal. And that happens because the action potential triggers those calcium channels that are gated to open, and that allows the calcium to flow in. So let's take a look at that happening. Once calcium ions enter the axon terminal, they then tell the vesicles to move to the membrane and to fuse with the membrane and dump their contents into the synapse. So let's see that happen. I only represented one kind of neurotransmitter dumping into the synapse because depending on the signal, they don't necessarily all um, get triggered to go into the synapse. The neurotransmitters are going to find and attach two receptors on the membrane of the receiving cell. Each kind of receptor is specific to a certain kind of neurotransmitter. And when they fit in to the right receptor, they're going to trigger a response within the receiving cell. So I made a stop motion video showing this. They actually fit based on shape, but I'm using color to represent it. The fitting of the neurotransmitters into those receptors can trigger an action potential in the receiving cell. If there's enough of a signal, you'll get an action potential in the receiving cell and it will then travel down that neuron and that will become a sending neuron. So there's my arrow to represent that action potential traveling down the postsynaptic cell. It's important to understand that those neurotransmitters never actually go into the receiving cell. After they fit into the receptors, they go back into the synapse, and then a few different things can happen. They can just diffuse away from the synapse. They can be broken down by enzymes. They can be taken in by a nervous system cell called a glial cell, or they can be re-uptaken into the original cell. So they can get repackaged into vesicles, just like they were before, that's called reuptake. Okay, I hope that helped you guys understand these steps. Make sure you have drawn each step to help you remember it. And then when we get down to the bottom, I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple different kinds of neurotransmitters. There are quite a few kinds of neurotransmitters, but I wanna to talk to you about two of my favorites because I think they're so interesting. Since I represented neurotransmitters with little puffs, let's talk about the yellow ones as a kind called serotonin. Serotonin is associated with mood and more serotonin generally means you feel better and happier. And I'm one of the many people who has anxiety and depression. So I take a medication that is an SSRI. And if you take anything for anxiety or depression, it's probably an SSRI. Well, SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. And what it does is when my serotonin goes into the synapse, my sending cells want to pick it back up too quickly and i need that serotonin to i need that serotonin to hang out in the synapse and stay there because that's part of what makes me feel better so i take a medication that helps do that also down in your table you'll see one called dopamine so i'm representing that with blue i find dopamine really interesting i find dopamine really interesting because this is the neurotransmitter that is most associated with addiction so when you are eating something you really like, maybe it's Pop-Tarts or, you know, for my children, um, cotton candy. They're obsessed with cotton candy. When you're eating something you really like, your brain secretes dopamine. And dopamine is the do it again chemical. It makes you wanna do that again. It makes you crave things that you like. And that's also true of people who are addicted to drugs. It's dopamine that's keeping them hooked on those drugs. That's kind of fascinating. So find out about three other neurotransmitters to add to your notes, um, any that interest you. And one last fun fact, neurotransmitters were discovered 99 years ago by a scientist who had a dream. And in his dream, he was experimenting with two frogs and 
he was conducting an experiment on the hearts of those two frogs. And that's how he discovered neurotransmitters. So if you're curious to know more, look up the discovery of neurotransmitters. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions at all, make sure to drop them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.